A week later, Duke William's court prepared to depart Rouen and celebrate Easter to the north at Vécom. Countess Adelaide, suffering from a head cold, had opted to ride in one of the covered baggage wains, its interior padded with feather bolsters and thick furs to cushion the jolting of the cart and keep the occupants warm. Judith hated travelling this way. The bumping and jarring was wearisome, and her sister had an irritating tendency to whine and wriggle. After much argument, she finally persuaded Adelaide to let her ride her black mare instead. There will be more room in the wain, she pointed out. I promise to ride where you can see me. Adelaide sneezed into a large linen napkin. Oh, go child, she flapped a weary hand. You make my head ache. Just have a care and do not give me anything with which to reproach you. Smiling with triumph, Judith curtsied to her mother and with a light heart instructed Sybil to tell the grooms to saddle her mare. Outside there was chaos as the court prepared for the journey to Fécom. Baggage wains were piled with household items, beds and hangings for the ducal chambers, chests of napery, chairs and benches, cushions, candle stands, all the rich English spoils, hawks from the mews, hounds from the kennels, a cage of flapping, squawking hens destined for her uncle's table and another of geese. So saturated was the bailey with noise and smell that Judith nearly turned back to the suffocating confines of her mother's chamber. And then she became aware of the man standing on the open ground where the men practised their weapon play. Walther of Seudson, Earl of Huntington and Northampton, as she now knew he was named. She had seen him most days among the English party and had studied him covertly, both fascinated and disturbed by his joyful vitality. As usual, the Chamberlain's lad, Simon de Saint-Lys, was glued to his side, eyes filled with the boundless adoration of a pup for its master.